There is a lighter ambiance percolating underneath the table, so... Yeah, too, it's not percolating above the table. <laughs> oh, he, he rises. That's true. <clears throat> That's true. Gentlemen, are we ready? Um, as ready as we'll ever be. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Here we ready, go. As ready. Stand by and in three, two. That was your cue. Oh, are we, we doing that? All right. See, I, Welcome to <laughs> Epic Environments, the, the podcast. The uh, I'm RJ. <laughs> Guillermo. Ben. Got it this time. Yes. Woo! Yes. We are <laughs> co-founders of Epic Environments. Um, you know, maybe Guillermo, you want to tell everybody a little bit about what Epic Environments is and what we do? Wow. Way to put me on the spot there, guy. No warning. That's no Go. So, <laughs> yes. Anyways, um, it's about going above and beyond and taking a regular space and turning it into something special where it really touches your senses and uh, makes you feel something. Absolutely. You know, that was very poetic. I yeah. feel like very poetic. It's all our, about the feelings. Our mantra at Epic Environments is education, engineering, Execution. Ex I, I got no help on that one. Execution. Let's try that yeah. again. Our mantra is education. Engineering. Execution. Boom. We'll get this. This is episode one. We'll tune back <laughs> in in episode <laughs> two. <laughs> and we got, we got this. It, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on the education front, you guys are tuned into it right now. We are going to be producing a ton of content. We're going to be throwing out how-to videos from everything from how to mount your TV on tile, which coincidentally might be coming down the pipe really, really quickly. Mm. Um, all the way down into the really nitty gritty stuff coming down the line with programming, automation, lighting, how to's, you know, video information, how to turn your space, your environment into something truly epic. That is the goal of uh, epic environments here on the interwebs. Um, now, when do we post? The podcast schedule is going to be a once a week kind of deal. We're looking mm -hmm. to post these every Wednesday. <clears throat> and uh, in the podcast, we're going to be talking about everything around the world when it comes to things to make, you know, epic environments. So everything from the technology to great examples of, uh, you know, epic environments from you know, around the globe to quick tips, how to's, all that good stuff. Stay tuned. You'll figure it out. We're kind of figuring it out as we go here, too. Um, and then in addition to that, on top of that schedule, we'll be producing the, our how-tos, and we'll be doing a bunch of reviews and different things along those lines. So really excited. Definitely. Really mm -hmm. excited. In fact, if you guys have something you'd like to see us tackle, like if you have a question, a burning question, like about your TVs or about your environments, if you're a restaurant owner and you're trying I, to think I have about... A I have a question. How, well, do you, how do you get a hold of us? Well, you can either leave a comment down below, because ah. we'll always be closely monitoring those. Comments, good. Yep. good. Or you can head over to our website, which is... EpicEnvironments.com. That's right, <laughs> EpicEnvironments.com. All of our video content, by the way, all of our podcasts, all of our how-tos, will have accompanying show notes uh, for the how-to stuff, uh, more detailed instructions or different uh, things like that, all on EpicEnvironments.com forward slash Epic TV. Um, so be sure to check in there <clears> fairly regularly. Uh, especially if you got a burning question, check there first, see if there's an answer. All maybe, right. Maybe we'll make a show out of it. Maybe. If, uh, if you have a good well, question, it might be a, a cool show episode. Or We go to a lot of uh, excellent uh, venues, I mean, really neat venues. Uh, so we get to uh, touch on a lot of things that people are going to want to know things about. Whew, it's a hot one here in the, yes. uh, the old shop. <laughs> hot dude, Claire. We tried, we tried to get to this uh, a little bit earlier, but we had some uh, design stuff that we had to tackle and, and get into this morning. So, unfortunately, we're tackling this uh, a little bit towards the, the heat of the day. Right, um, right. So, you know, if I sweat through my shirt, uh, just, you know, don't say anything. Mm -hmm. um, now, in addition to the website, obviously, we also have a Facebook uh, and Twitter and Instagram. You can find us on all those platforms, uh, just whatever it is. It's... Uh, Epic ENV. So on Twitter, it's at Epic ENV. Also on Instagram, Facebook.com forward slash Epic ENV. Um, hope to see you there. All right. I think it's enough of that. Let's talk about the news, man. Why don't we just jump into some things here? The news. Um, <laughs> so the first, uh, the first thing we tracked down uh, was a, uh, it was brought to you on uh, the AV Networks website. It's avnetwork.com. And they did this uh, expose on a Meyer Cal installation. Uh, in this church in um, 
Washington, D.C., and this is the, uh, the St. John Paul II National Shrine in Washington, D.C., and what I thought was kind of interesting in this is, it, we've run into this before with some of our House of Worship clients, is, um, you know, these guys went, and they had the decision, you go read the story, show notes uh, obviously has links to all this stuff, so you guys can check on it yourself, but what they were doing was, they had that age-old decision to make, you know, is it worth the extra money to bump up to these really spectacular speakers, Myers at the top of their game when it comes to this stuff, um, versus another solution that might have been a little bit economical and, and so on and so forth. And what they were able to accomplish with the Cal system specifically, with their beam splitting and different things, the the pictures are just phenomenal. The system really blends into the yeah. space. Yeah. It, Those speakers, it definitely hides. Like there's there's a shot here again. Check out the uh, the article for yourself where like they show this corner and there's a speaker there if you look closely. But right, right. now, like us looking at it, you right. can barely see yep. you know what's going it on with that uh, totally blends with in. that speaker. So Ben and I went to Meyer. And I uh, got to tour their facility. Yeah, that was amazing. And you heard the you heard the cows. Yeah, they were amazing. They had this uh, kind of cylinder thing uh, or cylinder uh, um, kind of room there, and they'd sh shoot the speaker just firing it straight ahead, and it would just be a jumbled mess of things. And then they'd beam steer it down to the group that was standing there, and all of a sudden you can hear every detail and none of the what echoed above ever translated back down when they steered it right back down. So now it was quite amazing. For those of you guys who maybe aren't aware of what a, a column or a column array speaker, this is a Cal column line array is what that stands for. Basically, imagine a speaker that's about four or five inches wide, but about 96 inches tall. And within there, there's multiple drivers and everything else. And through their technology, through mm. digital phasing amplification. and digital amplification, they're actually able to steer the beam of sound out. So you can actually get two separate beams of sound doing like this, you know, so you can hit something up top and you can hit an audience down below, all from the same speaker that's about five inches wide. And it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's scalable based on the application, so you can stack multiple cows. I believe they're on only doing each. four total. Two on each side, one on top, one on mm -hmm. bottom. The, uh, I think the top one throws to the back balcony in the back of the room, and the uh, bottom one throws to the front of the room, obviously. Right. So. We spec'd out, I think it was a three-stack for uh, Universal Church. Yeah. And Because uh, they had that mezzanine on the back, and we were trying to hit the mezzanine. Yeah. And then also get the collective main hall, which was deep. Yeah. It was uh, That was a deep main hall. Anyways, so... And one of the cool uh, things about, like, speakers like this, you know, everybody thinks of speakers, and they, they talk about it uh, in this, uh, this article here. Um, everybody pictures, like, the refrigerators, the mini fridges and these big, you know, refrigerators. And the bigger the system you get, the more of these boxes you need. And when you're in a, a environment that you really want the, the right sound for it, but you don't want to clutter it up with just boxes Right, these everywhere. can be custom painted to any, any decor, color you want, any... Yeah. The, Meyer will take the paint swatch and copy that color and paint the speaker to that, which is... Down to the grill and everything. Yeah, yeah. that's really cool. Instead of you yep. doing it at home and clogging up the holes. Top-notch service. Absolutely. <laughs> it's um, made in America uh, in Berkeley. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, obviously we're fans. Yeah, of it. I, should, I feel like it's important to, to, to note here, this is not a sponsored program by any stretch of the imagination. As, as professional... Uh, wait, what's the term? Technologist? We'll right. Get, we'll get to that. <laughs> oh, my. Um, uh, as professionals, <laughs> you know, we obviously have our preferences, and, and Meyer is one of the brands that we've always been very preferential mm. to. But there's also the same uh, sort of technology available in different other brands. Mm. Rankus Hines makes true, some columns. True, speakers. but they're not made in America, which is one thing I'm a big about um, having something like this. And the quality this guy, uh, always is closing, uh, always yeah. closing. The quality uh, of these speakers, they make the cones, the drivers there. We yeah, saw right them there. made right there. Right there. Um, some of the chambers they have to, you know, to, yeah. to well, contain the sound and test the drivers. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty cool. I think I think what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to probably reach out to the guys at Meyer and see if we can get our hands on a set of these columns to maybe do a, a unboxing, gear of the week oh, and unboxing that kind of thing. Yeah. So we'll work on that. And if a you guys tour are still too. Interested. We could do a tour for them so they could see. Uh, maybe, maybe in the future, we'll have to talk yeah. to them about. It. So again, credit where credits due for this story. This was the uh, the Saint Paul or the Saint John Paul II National Shrine in Washington D.C. And the design for the church's audio renewal 
uh, was actually uh, done by a consultant, Dave Walters of Sandroller and Associates. Mm. Uh, so great job with this one. I definitely recommend if you guys are interested in that kind of thing, check it out. Um, on to the next. Next one. Wait, wait, hold on. Uh, oh. 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 All right. Man, you almost died. Was there a trash can actually over there? <laughs> no. Um, so on to the next story. And this one, this one, when I came across this one, it kind of blew my mind a little bit. It, um, because I think even even for professionals like us, you don't really consider uh, over the air television service anymore. Yeah. Like for us, we're always. I do. All right, special guy. It's because I, I have think, my grandparents and my my mom. Sh- sure, and and this is this is what was surprising to me is you know when we go into it, we're usually hooking up you know direct TV boxes or cable boxes or yeah. something along those lines, and either you know, there could be a dozen or two dozen of these boxes, and that's you know but you that's the source for the television signal, yeah. and lately you've started to see more and more. Uh, streaming service boxes, things like you know your Roku's, your Apple TVs, and stuff along those lines. Yep. So it feels like, from an internal perspective, that that's obviously the direction <coughs> the industry is going. But then I came across this, which was uh, about HD over-the-air antennas, and due to the Olympics, uh, sales for these have spiked, um, and by an astounding uh, percentage, according to Twice.com, is where we found this story. Uh, it says more evidence that Americas are increasingly cutting the cable cord. Channel Master announced that for the weekend prior to the Olympic opening ceremonies, July 30th and 31st, the company experienced a 1,200% increase in TV antenna sales through direct online orders. 1,200% increase. Like, uh, over the air antenna is still, like, it's been a while since I've seen it, but I remember. You know, back Still in the day, bustling. the elements Still with the, all the little metal well, uh, and it's foils. Full, it's full and, HD. Uh, yeah. And I think now with the digital TV that's over the air, you get multiple channels and stuff like that. Like, I haven't personally dug back into it, but I'm yeah. kind of intrigued by this. You don't need as much of an uh, aluminum foil nowadays, I think. Right, so, right. Yeah. Well, and yeah, the, that's amazing. Yeah. Consumers so, u- usually buy the set-top uh, models that I've seen. The UHF lube with the two uh, uh, antennas that uh, are extendable. Right. Uh, telescoping. Whatever. Uh, anyways, I find the ones that mount to the roof and have a range associated with the calculation for the mileage from the transmission that point to sense. the house, mm-hmm. that's always your best bet. Um, when I'm specking it out for my uh, family, um, I went with the aerial on the roof with a mast, uh-huh. and then uh, we connected to a 75-ohm adapter, which is basically two screw points on the antenna, wrench those down, and then there's a F connector there, Uh ran it into the house. So there was an antenna on the roof, but my mom asked me, you know, what kind of antenna I should get, and this and that, and I (laughs) I was like, okay, well, this is what you need, and before you know it, she'd already bought it. When I went onto the (laughs) roof, I found out the wire had actually been damaged. So there was already an antenna up there, but it was, like, super rusty. So I just replaced it anyways, brought the old one down, connected a new wire, uh, and sure enough, Super awesome picture. So yeah. we got a set-top box, and uh, we have the box in a rack in the closet. Well, and I think away, most, and most TVs now control it. still or most TVs still come with a digital tuner. Like they haven't. Well, yeah, she's yeah. They yeah. Haven't yeah. So my grandparents that. have a digital box, tuner. You have to plug in, correct? Yes, because so in her application, the, she's using the old Pioneer uh, oh, monitor, like older television, no that. tuner oh, yeah, built yeah. into right, it. Right. So. Um, it's just super raw picture, kick, kick butt picture. Yeah. Uh, here, but, uh, here we are. When did they do? When was the DTV changeover? <laughs> it was got to be like six, seven years ago. Yeah. More than that now. Yeah, I've had that TV for and a while. It still, still like, looks good. And, good, and, and good. Here, here's here's one of the things that I pulled out of this story that kind of jumped out at me was uh, research from uh, GFK shows that more Americans are now using TV antennas mm-hmm. than subscribe to any individual pay TV provider. So Comcast, for example. The nation's largest has an estimated 2.2 yeah. million video subscribers, while an estimated 24 million U.S. households are on uh, are using TV antennas. And twice, I think what the what they're trying to convey here is that you know this isn't a remnant of the old technology. This is people coming around to the fact that the old technology is there and it will allow them a good alternative to their cable providers, to their satellite providers. And they may already have it already there because it's been there this whole time. Cable TV is so (laughs) expensive. I mean, here we have one box and we have to have it. Like, we've actually tried to get rid of uh, cable in the house. I don't watch TV. I don't even... But the wife wife has to have (laughs) her shows. She's got to watch them, which, you know, I completely understand. (laughs) And it's one of those things where you're paying a hundred something dollars these days. Oh, yeah. How you cut it. Yeah. Bundle it, baby. Right, to watch 
like two or three uh, channels. Landline you don't use. and uh, Right, exactly. Yeah. exactly. You can't get in for out of bundle. You're in for two years. They're slowly going to hide. Anyways, right. yeah, so... You know, over the air, definitely something to consider, I think, uh, moving forward. One of the things we may have to think about doing here at Epic Environments is maybe a quick how-to on selecting a, you know, the proper the HD antenna. antennas yeah. to sure. try out over the air in Just your area. Just a quick tip. Remember the range, how far you are right. from yeah. the <laughs> point of origin. All right. A key your shot. To that. My shot. All right. Sweet. So, uh, let's see. Wait a minute. Uh, what, do, what are you going for? It's, it's more fun if you don't call it. Okay. Yeah, I was, then, then if you hit it. was aiming for that spot right there. Yeah. yeah See you the hit spot? it too, right? I did. The, the spot. I was close. I yeah. was close the to the spot. This guy. <laughs> Near the place. Watch out, Over current yonder. popular basketball player. This yeah. guy's coming for you. Uh, horrible um, basketball. That's it. That's My sport those, was soccer. It's one of those sports ball things. All right. <laughs> the next bit of news that we got here is yeah. and this is really like I pulled this out just because I was kind of excited about this. I don't know how many people are going to be excited about this kind of thing. So maybe we'll just breeze through this real fast. But Yamaha just introduced a all-in-one soundbar uh, tagged at two hundred dollars. So Pretty like cheap. we've we've installed tons of uh, Yamaha makes a fantastic soundbar by the way the yes. YSP series. Yes. Like honestly is one of those things a second to none. Uh, as far as our opinion is concerned, again, not sponsored, just sharing our our, our opinions on this. Um, but they've always been fairly expensive. They were really intricate, yeah. and then the re there was a reason why they equipment. were expensive, though, right. because they were able to uh, steer the sound to a certain degree for the room. It right, would, bounce uh, it off the walls. To right, it, it would customize to the room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, set up a and the technology behind that was just in insanely impressive. It's, uh, it's very similar to the, the Meyer Cal stuff, actually. It's exactly, an yeah. array yeah. speaker just consumer, on its side. right? Consumer tipped style. on its side, yeah. and it's bouncing the the signal around to the wall so that you actually hear without a speaker behind you, you hear things coming from yep. behind you. It's just, it's always been phenomenal. But mm -hmm. the price point on them, I think their low one, when they first came out, was almost... Oh no, the low one was a grand. It was a grand, and yeah. then the, the big one was expensive. almost two. And in right. recent years, they've kind of come down, but now to see one at $200... That you still need a sub. Though, I right. Uh, well, yeah, uh, all of them you still have to add a sub, but it does yeah. have the capability of doing a sub, but it can do... Uh, the HDMI ports support true 7.1 or 5.1 channel signals. Um, the soundbar can be controlled wirelessly via Bluetooth yep. and Android that's and Apple. It looks pretty nice. And it's two hundred dollars. Yeah, like, that's the that's, that's the price point bedroom. of most system yep. in a box. That's a sweet exactly. bedroom. Uh, and you don't have to cut anything. Video so. games, surround sound system. Absolutely, you place it right in front of your TV. So, <clears throat> not not necessarily an epic. Uh, item, but for a really kid, kind of it's pretty cool. epic. If you yeah. had a sub through a ten-inch, uh, all right, you're up. Yamaha oh, oh. sub. <laughs> yes, we do recycle. Well, well. Yeah, because we're gonna have to pick. Oh, this up. oh, 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 man. Okay. You got some height on that. One. Eh. You got some. Oh, you got oh, show sure. off. Got it. All right. Um, and uh, let's see here. Our last, uh, our last story before we get into our main topic uh, comes to us from CE Pro Magazine. Uh, CE Pro, uh, th this one, this one's got a big number attached to it. <laughs> is eight point nine billion dollars? Eight point nine billion dollars. And according yes, to, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so earlier this month, Digital Entertainment Group (DEG) announced its second quarter figures that find consumers spending on home entertainment is strong, rising six percent over the same quarter in 2015. DEG says total U.S. home entertainment spending exceeded. 4.3 billion for the second quarter and says the year to date total. That's just year to date. Like we got half the year left to go. Uh, hmm. Or not, I guess half, a little less than half, uh, is at $8.9 billion. Hmm. Uh, it goes on to say perhaps not as, not as surprising sales of uh, 4K Ultra HD televisions continue to surge. Uh, and DEG reports uh, quarter to uh, 1.4 million. 4K televisions were sold, which represents a 119% increase versus quarter two in 2015. So 4K on the rise, insane numbers spent yep. uh, on home entertainment. Now, we were kind of bouncing this around a little bit earlier. And that, How was it spent yeah. right. and where was we're it spent? We're pretty sure yeah. this includes some What's things. What's their definition of Right, like does it include theater? services, like streaming services? Does that include Netflix figures and things along those lines, or is it just equipment? I say, we, I say a grand to 1500 on the TV. 
Uh, right. And then a surround sound system, which is between five hundred and a thousand dollars, easy. Right. And easy. then you have. And we're just talking about the stuff you would go down to Best Buy and pick. Yep. Right. This isn't even a right. custom design. Wire like, cable, a hundred bucks or right. so. Get, if you get the get monster or whatever, you're, you're looking at <laughs> 150, 200 bucks. Um, and then you have the incidentals like a Blu-ray player, uh, Apple TV. Um, yeah, the bar used Universal to, remote. The bars uh, generally hold somewhere between like thirty five hundred, three grand dollars. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. For right. something that's three to five grand. Uh, just an out of box home theater <clears throat> system that you just go down and you want to do sure. the whole thing soup to nuts. Now, obviously, when you get into the cu- the custom stuff, the commercial oh, well, yeah. integration. You know the price goes Rack, up from hidden, there. Everything, right? Custom control. It's like a it's like right. an iceberg for everything you yeah. see. There's you know a hundred things Behemoth you didn't see behind it, it. exactly, <laughs> uh, just to make that environment seamless in, in how it goes. But um, yeah, still eight point nine billion dollars. I just thought that was kind of like like that. Just to th- just think, sit on that number. Yeah. Eight. Wow. Okay. Don't sit on it too long. It'll be kind of depressing. All right, here we go. Yeah. No, that's how Kobe. much piece of oh. it. <laughs> oh, that, was, that was pretty good. That all was right, good. all right. So, are you boys ready for this one? Mm. This is the one, man, that's kind of... This one This one is interesting. Um, the, so here, here's what happened. Uh, we catch uh, catch everybody else up to speed. Mm-hmm. There's an organization uh, in the industry, for those of you that don't know, called CEDIA. Um, and I don't remember exactly what that acronym stands for, but CEDIA... Consumer Electronics something, something, something. Something, 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 something. <laughs> it's a membership kind of driven organization, and they do a lot of good work in the, the industry when it comes to setting standards, when it comes to certifications, and trying to set uh, some sort of bar or some sort of a semblance of uh, way to, to measure, I guess, the proficiency of an integrator... Right. Um, it's a machine too because they have not only their whole trade show uh, yeah. and magazine right. and training and all the other sponsorship stuff. From, right, it's a business like any other. You know, sure, there, sure, There's sure. multiple revenue sources, but at their core, like their core is to ultimately help support yeah. the yeah. industry behind consumer electronics, behind the installers, and you know that ranges everything from the guy that's operating out of the back of his van that hangs TVs for you know a buck fifty. Right. Now you said installers too. Well, and that's the, that's what we're going to yeah. get to. All the way up to you know your multi million dollar national conglomerates. Like everybody plays in the same industry, and CD is kind of there to provide different services, different metrics, different training tools, and so on and so forth. Like that kind of explains CDI, I feel like. Yeah, right? okay. that's yeah. that's a good way to say it. So CDIA, um recently at uh, what was it the uh, the Powerhouse Alliance, uh, which is uh, another industry uh, behemoth that uh, we can get into <laughs> later. Um, but they had this big uh, conference, and um, one of the people from CDIA got up, and I have uh, the notes here somewhere. Who was it? It was uh, oh yeah, Vin- she Vincent used Bruno. Multiple terms, so. There we go. It was it was Vincent, the uh, the CEO of CDA. He delivered his keynote address at the Powerhouse Alliance fourth annual national sales meeting last month, where he called for an end to the industry term integrator. Now, if why would why would they do that? Hold on, hold on. Let's let's why, let's, why let's answer the the first question that everybody watching this had. What's an integrator, <laughs> right? So, hey Ben, <laughs> what do you do? Uh, I you can't <laughs> say everything. Yeah, I know. You can't um, say everything. One of the reasons this is kind of a raw nerve for us is, you know, having just founded Epic Environments, we went through a whole selecting a name uh, process. And I think we can share what our original uh, kind of idea was. Uh, mm, no? Well, someone's going to take it and yeah. be like, it's so cool, right. we're copying you. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Well, the name's dead. The well, name's the dead. The name's dead. The name's, the name's dead. dead. And Besides, the we own the dead. domain, and if you'd like the it, you can call us. The term is dead, too. so I guess it was good that we didn't because go with said, it, huh? That's true. That's true. Um, we we felt that. That's yeah. that's why it didn't ring true. No, uh, we were originally going with the name uh, Innovative Integrations, yep. and we kind of pushed that name around a little bit. It with some rolls off the tongue nicely. Right. It sounded like... Innovative uh, Integrations. Two eyes, and yeah, we could <laughs> get everything behind it. Innovative is a cool word. But integrations <laughs> really started causing us trouble. It, it was did. we would go. We actually sat what down at a at a, at a meeting. Yeah. meeting. Yeah, dozen people at the table. We said, the "Innovative integrations. We're integrators. We do this." Their eyes What's just it? went like this <laughs> as I was saying. I, I started breaking down some of this stuff and, and aspects of what we do. And, and then one of them like, finally yeah. said, "Like, oh, you're an installer." 
<laughs> They're like, well, uh, well we're integrator. Why are you cheapening my name? It's integrator. So anyways, <laughs> that was just one of several reasons why that name wouldn't work out. And so we, we kind of gotten away from it. But integration itself, integrator as a term, has always been one of those things that... Hard, searchable term. It, well, yeah, it's not it's what people big. are searching for. Yep. Too, like, it denotes so many different industries. Yeah, if you want somebody to come in and install a home theater system for you or build a or design a uh, entire, you know, literal theater in yep. your, your basement or whatever, you're not going to search for integrator. You're going to search for home theater, um, guy. A home theater installer. Home theater, home theater or, or lady. Home theater. Lady right. AV system guy. designer. Maybe. That's the wrong stuff. Right. All that stuff. And Whoa. actually, before before the show started, <laughs> um, we did look up uh, on some metrics here. And this was kind of interesting. Mm. Um, through Google Keyword uh, Planner, you can go in and see how many times a certain keyword is searched. Mm -hmm. So technologist, which is what they want the to go to, the new term. Instead of integrator now. That's right, we're technologists. Ooh. Get rid of integrator, cut um, that out of your brain. Gets searched for nationally, uh, here in the United States, about 4,400 times a month, which, which sounds is okay. Low. Uh, yeah, it's comparable, actually, to uh, installer and so on and so forth. But here's the problem. People who are searching for that are searching minute. for radiology technicians, uh, radiological x-ray salaries, um, technician medical schools, technologists. medical technologists, like all of these different... X-ray technologists. <laughs> nowhere in here is there anything that has uh, to do with uh, audio-video or <laughs> audio-visual, um, lighting. Right. Like, you know, so... Possibly a missed a missed mark. There. It almost sounds like a smoothie. Yeah. You guys want to get a couple technologists? Uh, great. I'll get maybe. the protein. Uh, I don't know if the, the smoothies what jumps to mind. Uh, no. no. Oh, what do you think? Uh, a speakeasy drink or something. Uh, there you sure. go. Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. You become something. a technologist after you have yeah. like two of these. Or bad someone boys. at a steampunk party you can order. Right. Uh, there you go. With right. a little turn gear. Thing, yeah. Uh, totally. Turning gear. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> who is it? Uh, Julie, Julie Jacobson. Uh, Julie. Julie, Julie. Julie, Julie. Oh, Julie. Um, did she, you see the video, Julie? I did. She, she, we were laid, she laid it down. We were, we, were, we were commenting on the lighting. So yeah, Julie Jacobson, uh, and I'm getting this also <laughs> off CE Pro. Hugger, what's that, Hugger She Meister? wrote down. Oh, yeah. I, what, they, is that Hugger, real? Hugger Meister? Um, Hergelmyth? Hergelmyth. So there's a crazy video that you actually <laughs> should go see. Uh, again, Link in the show notes, link on our, uh, our website, epicenvironments.com forward slash epic TV. Um, the, the video actually makes a valid point. It's like, realistically, we can call ourselves whatever we want. Anything. Like, if we want to be technologists, we can be technologists. Uh, they threw out the term Hergelmurf. I or, thought Rico Suave would be cool. But Rico, uh, Hergelmurfel, that's what it is. Hergelmurfel. Hergel oh. So apparently Hergelmurfel Hergel is... Hergel but Hergelmurfel is just as <laughs> impactful as technologists because Hergel nobody's searching Hergel for Hergelmurfels <laughs> to install their AV systems. Um, yep. <laughs> so really what that comes down but to is... But soon they will be. Thanks, but be. thanks, but no <coughs> thanks. I think is no kind of where no thanks. technology. So, what, what do you mean? You're saying no thanks to the I term? I think thanks, but no thanks. What do you guys think? Like, if you <sighs> do, you think technologists is something that's will that was stick? the first time I've heard of that technologist. Right. I mean, if you were looking for a company to come in and design a system for you, or you know, put a system in your church, or I mean, is that like on par with a scientist? I think that's what they're science? going for because the the I the mean, technology is some, becoming so crossed over now with your streaming service you boxes. And you're getting degree, a lot more. You go to school to be a technologist. Well, conspiracy hmm. theorist over here. Yeah, hmm. I have a theory on it. Yeah, and I hope this doesn't. That's like a whole episode. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should talk about it because it'll bring the powers down on us. Well, the Illuminati of CDF. I'll, 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 I'll word it. I'll word it. Um, uh, I'll word it. Simply, I think uh, safely here. We won't, we won't get too you, out there. Okay, we won't have censor to censor it a little bit because yeah, because that's here. Here's what I think is a, a, <laughs> I don't want to bring you guys down with me. Here's a valid concern <laughs> when we look at Cedia's attempt to first go integrator and now to this more obscure term technologists. They are a company that ultimately generates revenue off of certifications. Are we really just seeing somebody try to brand a term that is later going to be Marketable, monetized? Right. You know, but to now call yourself a technologist, you have we'll to. We'll throw in the free one. You, <laughs> right. just, you could take the test online for free. Right. Yeah. But then if you want to become a number two or a number three or, or, or a B right. or whatever, 
Um, it's that extra 150, 250, 550, whatever it is. <laughs> sure. uh, and don't get me wrong, I must say the their or tests company, are like... very complete and and awesome. They've always been used in the industry to for people to one up on mm -hmm. what they need to know. Sure. Um, but let's, again, rebranding, repackaging, right. and all that—that's let's say let's say hypothetically story. the term technologist <laughs> takes off, okay? And now all of a sudden, due to Google search results, we we monitor everybody's this changing stuff. their name. We all start calling ourselves technologists. Epic environment Innovative technologists. technologists. Right. Right. But then, a, eighteen months down yeah. the road, we get a letter from some company saying that they own the term technologist, and we're not right. officially we're all allowed screwed. to use it. We got to pay them ten cents right. for every like, word we say. Like okay, so if you're if you're looking for the boogeyman, no. There's a possible boogeyman. Yeah, we're not saying that yeah. that's at all po like going to happen or anything like that. Generally, <laughs> generally, Cedia has always been very uh, benevolent. The wrong word, but you know, very <laughs> you know, up and up and in all their stuff. I believe in their their certification programs. Like I think that honestly has become a model. Yeah, uh, that a lot of people yeah. have, have have copied. And, and it's so good. So it, it, it's it's just kind of funny with all this terminology. Like, why do we need? What's the purpose? To do this? That's Usually, that's what we're talking right, about. What we, is the purpose and to what end? And does it really work? Well, uh, when we did, when we were picking our name, it was very important that we pick something, and that name unto itself tried to convey what we did. You know what I mean? Right. Like technologist. What is it's that? hard? Yeah, we're creating environments. Right. We're creating Install. light control. That's very specific. Sound as to uh, what you do. Yeah. Pyro heat. Right. You know, the whole nine yards. But that's different than installer or. Integrator, I guess. Like we are integrators. A to B facilitator. Yeah. So, what do you guys <laughs> think? Leave it in the comments below. Let's have the let's have the conversation. You know, if you guys think what would we you should suggest? be technologists. Yeah. What's a better term in the uh, something that makes more sense? Something that yeah. sounds better. Yeah. What? Uh, I mean, if Hergel Murphle nope. is on the on the table, um, I already got a beat on the website. That's like oh, the, you do? You got HergelMurfle.com? Hergelmurfle. All right. Grossmeiner. All right. So. Okay. Cool. <laughs> wait, what are you doing? We're not done? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, uh, you guys are, are just like throwing out papers. I'm going to throw it too. I know. That's what I wanted to do. Oh, oh all right. Oh, right, right. All right. So I missed this one right there, here. There's a page two. Oh. There's a, there's a page two, Gearbo. <laughs> no, um, it's... <clears throat> again, tune in uh, next week. We'll be... A little more uh, practiced at this. Whoa, uh, whoa, whoa. So we've gone through uh, the, <laughs> the main topic, just to get these guys back on uh, the same page here with us. Uh, Let's get on track, so bro. We've gone, we've gone through the main topic. We yes. know the tips and tricks. Yeah. And then after that, we're going to do the epic equipment. And then after that, we're going to... I read that now. When okay. you pointed it out, cool. and embarrassed me in front of everybody. So <laughs> on to epic... <laughs> epic... There's no crying in podcasting. Sorry, sorry. Okay, my bad. <laughs> Crying in your dressing room like the rest of the professionals. <laughs> what dressing room? I'll just go that to means my no car. Crying. I'll just go to my car. All right. So today, today for tips and tricks, and every week we're going to try to come up with uh, for tips and tricks something that's kind of cool that you guys may or may not already have heard of or know or whatever and can use and you know a general tips and tricks kind Otherwise of. Otherwise, we'll tell you if it's. <laughs> ah, I see what you did there. That that's for that's for a special a special someone, if she's still watching. I don't know if she's gotten this far through the uh, the podcast. She's the oh, well, uh, <laughs> that is, uh, it was from my uh, niece's uh, birthday party last weekend. Oh. It, was in, it was in their it was in their uh, pinatas. Oh, uh, yeah. I still think we need to point out and then go like this whenever it yep. is something that's kind of. Is it cool or so is today it? today on our tips and tricks? Uh, today we're going to talk about TV sizes. So there's a lot of Whoa. debate. Whoa. Whoa, what? Bigger's better, of course, right? Like, Depends on bigger... how far you're sitting from it. No, yeah. no. Give me your man card. Can I get an e man card? In the man card. Three feet away. So, really, what this is, gentlemen, is a way for Come you to on. justify needing a bigger television. Yeah. Um, that's a pretty good way. To that's that's a, that's one way to explain it, ladies. Uh, that think the TV should be smaller. This is a guideline to how big that TV should actually be. So there always seems to be a little disagreement on that. Well, I think it's it could be budget based, but uh, you know, make sure you have your man call us to install it or call our boys to install it. Uh, seen many uh, what are you janky. To, what are you trying to say tonight? Boyfriend install. Trying to call everybody's a, man card. Yeah. 
We're gonna, what, they're yeah. gonna, no, they're going to be able to offend everybody. They're, the they're going to be able to watch out. our how to video like we, <laughs> and, and learn up. Yes, yeah, exactly. That's true. Like that's we've already, true. So, spoiler Either alert. That or I'm going to get <laughs> hammered down by critiques. Spoiler alert. Of... This guy, we've already got it in the can. We're going to edit it and get it out hopefully this week or next week. But we've got a three part series on how to yeah. hang a television in, in, in the tile. kitchen through tile. Through tile. tile. Using. Dude, you had to wet. That's a. That's yeah. not the tip. That's not the tip. That's a tip oh. for that video. The tip for this yeah. video is about is about a TV size. Wrong tip. Right. So my a, bad. There's always a little bit of a a, a mystery around this. Mm -hmm. Like you know, everybody thinks it's kind of subjective and so on and so forth. But there isn't. There I is always actually, do this. Just reach my hands out. <laughs> it's actually. Yeah, I always do. A, um, <laughs> it's this big. It should be it's like this. This big. There is a. There's a metric. Yes. And to get optimal viewing distance. And, and what that means Pixels is... Pixels per angle. Right, there is a scientific thing Pixels behind per this. Angle. PBA. Your mm. vision for you to have a... Uh, when you watch television, if you have the correct aspect ratio of distance to screen size, it encompasses a certain percentage of your overall vision. When you hit that percent percentage, bleh, when you hit that percentage of your overall vision, your brain actually tunes out the stuff that's around automatically and focuses on what is in the primary, mm -hmm. what you're primarily focusing on. If the screen is too <laughs> small, uh, the brain has a hard time doing that, and that's where you can get these distractions in your environment and so on and so forth. If the screen is too big, it can also have a negative effect. <laughs> Sorry, gentlemen. I it can also have a negative anything. effect because now you're distracted by literally what your brain's trying to tune out to see the whole picture. So, yep. the mm -hmm. without further ado... You're starting ado, to turn your head. Like, what happened Right, when you there? have to do this to watch Avatar... No, yeah. just kidding. That's an old movie reference, right? What's hey, well, what if it was in IMAX, though? You have to do this to watch yes, Batman versus Superman. Yes, that's how I see everything. Um, so, you know, sometimes <laughs> you when you're down at the IMAX theater and you want that big old yeah. 3D experience and everything coming at you, you can skew to the larger side of this mm -hmm. equation. You know what I mean? If that's more your game. Um, but generally, you should probably stick to it. And the equipment... We keep dancing around it. Should I just give them the number? Get to it, dude. Okay, Come okay. On. The equation Wait is... You, the equation Wait is... Two to one. One, one, three, one point. One to five. One point. To six one to and seven. a half. Two one gigawatts. The equation is one and a half <laughs> times. Point seven one gigawatts. One and a half times the ver uh, the diagonal size of your screen. Okay, so oh. if you have a thirty six inch screen, it would be one and a half times or thirty two. Right? Sorry, thirty two inch screen. It would be one and a half times thirty two. Would be the uh, or the furthest you would want to be away from that television. Four mm -hmm. feet. I think it's like five, Yeah, six we can feet. do the math if you really want to do the math. Break out a calculator, dude. Come oh, on. This is your thing. Where's you have the, the equation. Um, <laughs> it's uh, about, um, he's. I would usually was a 60 out. inch for about 12 to 15 feet, somewhere around there. What? If you're sitting at about 13 feet, 60 inch used to be the thing. Now, that's no, a bathroom TV nowadays. Yeah, like right. That's that's bathroom that's, totally. That's the that's kitchen, a talent. Kitchen, that's being able the to pull those numbers out of your shower. Well, no, and then like what a seventy-five inch you'd want to be sitting. I mean, most of the time people don't go that far because their living rooms aren't that big. Unless you have like a dedicated theater, you might have the staggered seating and all that jazz. But uh, so uh, if you go to the website, by the way, we will have there is a calculator. Uh, that is available online. We'll have a link to that available uh, on the show notes and in the comments down below. But, uh, for example, a 55-inch television has a distance of 8 feet. Okay, so my so number you, is probably wrong. Right. Let's go to, go to 50, 60. 60-inch television? 60. 60-inch television. <laughs> I say 60. 60-inch 60 television should be... 8.5 eight, eight feet. Uh, maximum distance of 8.5 feet away. So I what was you do, way off. go to the website. First, <laughs> go to your living off. room. Measure from the TV to wherever you sit on the couch. Figure out what that is. Go to this website. Plug that distance in. It'll tell you what size your TV should be at minimum. So and you can reverse you engineer it. You can to, go which right. TV you have. Now, and hopefully this works better for the people out there than it did for me. I simply got laughed at when I told her that I needed a 65-inch television. For because, optimum performance. Right. And says, who won? Well, I don't have a 65-inch You never win. That's <laughs> true. Uh, yeah, so 75 inch, 10 feet, 10 and a half feet. I know, feet. but did you tell her it's on the internet, so it's true? I told her, I showed her numbers, <laughs> things. No. Um, <laughs> what? We now, also are, are, be uh, probably good to mention progressive scan, that right? And the distance and how that matters with progressive scan. Um, 
TVs. No, no. Uh, these days I think it's uh, that's more of a conversation around refresh rates, uh, the two forty yeah, hertz stuff and things hertz. like that, which is a whole different episode. Okay, okay. Well, all okay. right. <laughs> well, make sure we write that one down. I gotta I gotta tease mm. you guys with something. All right, so that is our tips and tricks for the uh, the podcast. Now, let's get into epic equipment, Ben. Epic. There's some equipment located just over there. If you would reach down and, and grab that. No. Uh, uh, oh. In the sack. Uh, the, uh, I thought the, we were doing the projector. Oh, the sack. <laughs> <laughs> nothing nothing the from projector. the boneyard today. <laughs> okay. All right, so here we have... Nice. Wow. Let's, go. <clears throat> um, let's get this out of there. Oh, oh yeah. God. Uh, I have a part dog. of the dampening. So here we have a kit. This is a sample kit here, Ben. You want to open that up real fast? So I'm sorry, you got to speak up. There's so much sound deadening already. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the oh. things, one of the things we get to, uh, uh, we get hit one. with a lot here uh, <laughs> in kind of our our realm and niche. That's kind of tough to do. Uh, it's, it's stuffed. Is people who think it's that acoustic um, what they need to do is they need to actually like get better speakers or yeah, this is cool. Pair, yeah. They need to get bigger speakers or something like that because the room just doesn't Slang. sound right. They know it should sound better, but it doesn't sound better. And they've already put a bunch of money into their system, but it just doesn't seem to to do the trick. It still sounds muddy, or it still sounds tinny, or it still sounds hot. Murky. Um, and a lot that's of times, my favorite. right? A lot of times, that's all my you house. need. Check it out. Anyway. These guys. <laughs> a lot of times, all you need is uh, you need to treat the room acoustically with some acoustic treatment. I don't think, is that actually, yeah, I guess that is, huh? That's their yep. email stuff. <laughs> um, That's good stuff. You need to do a little acoustic treatment. And what happens is your walls all reflect sound. Every surface in your room reflects sound. So if you have tile floors and you have a hard fireplace and you've got maybe a, a couple windows in the room that aren't treated or have, you know, veneer blinds or something, the sound just bounces all over the place. Yep. So what you can do, and what uh, companies like Oralex here have done, again, not sponsored. Uh, this is a sample kit that we have that uh, we bring out uh, yep. just to show people yep. kind of you know the different options and stuff when we discuss this. You know, you can get panels like this that this actually, is cool. yeah, they're pieces Sonic of art print. that hang on the wall. Now this is acoustically treated to deaden the sound. It's in the a room. it's a fabric that goes over uh, an acoustic panel. Yep. And uh, basically, any picture you have, you can give them. Mm -hmm. They'll print it, so it can make it. It, it becomes a work of art, like right. you said, and, and it does. And it it's integrates job. nicely yeah, to into a place. That. It doesn't it's technology beautiful. nicely. It's almost like silk. Yeah, the I don't um, know if it's silk or not, but it, it it feels almost like silk. Well, and that's or the thing. Rayon like, kind of a, a lot of people they've seen like uh, they've seen like studio uh, acoustic paneling where it looks like egg crate. It looks like that. It looks like this. Yeah, or it's this like dull gray, but it's got when like the egg crate look to it. When the like whole the room is look to is uh, decked out in the foam, it does look cool, and it's that sound of soundless. Right, or, but sometimes, or, sometimes like for example, you don't want to have your room look like a recording studio sure. to get yep. optimal performance. I do, and that's well. <laughs> And that's where things like this come in. You know, you've yeah. got designer fabrics. Like, yep. it's not really going to come out well. Again, links to all this is stuff in the taupe? description. Taupe. I think this is um, a charcoal. Tons of different colors. Taupe. Yep. Tons of different patterns, different ways of doing that. Mm -hmm. You can stick things in the corners. If you have uh, certain types of ceilings, you can actually put different things up Base there. Base traps. Yep. And, you know, Ben. Ben's our, our resident audio engineer guru expert. Scientifically speaking, what's going on here? Um, well, you got a few different things. Um, the foam stuff is going to do a few things. It's gonna you're gonna notice a pretty decent difference almost immediately if you put plenty of this up in a room. It's gonna suck out a lot of the high frequencies and uh, and really tighten up your room really quickly. The trick is really to tighten it up in all areas of frequencies, and that's why you get into denser, thicker materials like this fiberglass. Or um, even some of this. Well, this will help uh, kind of reflect a little bit of sound, but also absorb some sound because it does have a shiny kind of finish to it. That's for so, the, the gymnasiums. Yeah. So, uh, and what you can do or is you can hang these baffles right. in a uh, in a room, and they will swing very minute distances, but they will absorb the sound energy and help basically. Um, troubled audio or so troubled also acoustics. So also where something like that might come in handy is let's say you have a, a, a 
quick serve restaurant, you know what I mean? A, mm. a small joint, you know, 150 people or less or something like that. You've got that open ceiling, you've got that concrete or that tile floor. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of room noise, there's a lot of echoing because it's usually smaller spaces where things are bouncing around. You can start implementing things like this. You know, it's not white, it comes in whatever color you want, strategically placed around the different uh, areas of the building. Mm -hmm. You know, you could actually do your menu board or something uh, with the, the printed side of things there and put that on the walls and make it completely invisible, but yet really up the experience of what's yep. going on in the environment. You really know I mean? uh, make it seamless into right. you don't walk in and think, oh, acoustic treatment, you think well, designed well. And that's the thing. A lot of people don't, but when you do step up into high-end environments, acoustic uh, is... A primary well, I think concern. it's, like it's huge. You know, when you when you're dropping ten million dollars on building a restaurant, yeah, it better sound, yep. you know, fantastic. And you can make it look good too. Absolutely. Yep. And when someone's taken the time to actually engineer that aspect of the job, yeah, they're really they they're doing a complete job. They're not just throwing in a bunch of speakers and just cranking in. Hey, there you go. Um, they're really doing the full job that needs to be done. And yeah. So acoustic treatment should be considered for most almost every job. Almost mm. everything. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Virtually. Um, in fact, a lot of times too, you can go into situations. Again, a lot of people think they may have to replace an entire system or something like that to upgrade their sound when right when they could have an acoustic problem. Right. All they need is some acoustic panels. Yep. You know, strategically placed uh, to. to Excuse my reach. This doesn't this stuff look like rock wool? It does. I thought this was I actually this like trash wool. that was left over from a packing thing. It was just in the bag. <laughs> right. But uh, this is kind of cool to put in boxes or in walls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, That's going to help insulate inside walls for sure and underneath floors that are raised up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about, uh, what do you think of that other charcoal mat over there? In the, this guy? The foam. Yeah. Those that's are, a, that's those a floor are piece, isn't it? Or? This does. You can put it in the wall yeah, as well. Yeah. I think this is a four, please. I mm. don't know on this piece, but you know, Dude, could be. Uh, oh, you, you can know hear um, the difference. Where's the? Oh, yeah, look at the, the mounting because there's also those mounting, the mounting hardware that's oh, on yeah. there. This I, I thought like this the was really cool. Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! Dude, it's all right. No big thing. This is kind of cool. The, the got a podcast going here. I have time for spilled drinks. <laughs> Put that down there. So yeah, these uh, we'll break this apart and kind of spread these out. Uh, you got everything from your basic. Uh, I think this is one you were mounting for, options. Right? Well, no, there's yeah these these are these isolate. Yeah, this would go in between. Let's say a specialized uh, drywall. Type of material, it's more. Oh, this is okay. Insulation. So, yeah, this is this uh, goes yeah, between like the, the framing, the, the studs, and the drywall right. or the, uh, the 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 board. Uh, you guys probably can't see this too well on the on the thing again. Links, rubber, links below, but yeah, it's basically a rubber mat or polypropylene. I don't know what it's, it is. It's a special rubber mat, but you yep. put that when you have the drywall off the walls, you put that over the studs, you secure it, and then you drywall over that, and that kills. Uh, a ton of sound between rooms. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. It's um, definitely there to isolate the sound and uh, minimize bleed right, outside right. Which the is area you're in. Really important if you're ever in a situation where you've got a loud neighbor or something along those lines, and you're trying to kind of deaden that noise. And you've got I no other options. I once got a call to acoustically isolate a house due to a loud Did neighbor. Did you noise canceling? Oh. So you equally <laughs> outputted the. They didn't realize what they were getting themselves into budget wise. So. <laughs> and then you got. Uh, Two million dollars later. Yeah. Brackets and a like new this. new building. <laughs> this is kind of dangerous, but. Oh, cool yeah. Looking. Don't put this up near your face unless you're ready to get. Uh, but yeah, you. Shink. Basically just mount that to the wall and it's got these four hooks on it. Mm -hmm. And then you just hang your phone. Yeah, right those you hooks. stab it. And this one will actually offset the foam from the wall, and they have uh, flush ones here that these you can go flush to the wall. Or the, these corkscrew type where it'll hang. Yeah, so you can do some hanging kind of stuff. Thing. Yeah. So really, and you know, again, this isn't a sponsored. Uh, this isn't a sponsored thing. Oralux, you know, we're big fans of it, but there's a ton right. of other uh, manufacturers out there too that do different audio. Uh, what is it? SoundCow is a good Sound online. SoundCow, yeah, we we did some business with SoundCow Cow a few times, and uh, they were reliable. They sent yeah. the product. The product was fine. It was good. Um, 
and uh, they were able to customize what we wanted. Uh, the fabric mm -hmm. colors were customizable, which was cool. And there's other, uh, um, like, uh, there's a company, Dymo, uh, mm -hmm. does their Dynamats yep. and different acoustical mm -hmm. treatments there, mm -hmm. too, as well, uh, sound deadening stuff. So, you know, just the, the one thing that I kind of was hoping we could get across when we, we brought this out is remember that sound is not all about the equipment. Sound is about the environment. Yep. Sound is about what's around, exactly. where it's at, how what the speakers it feels are pointing at. Based on the environment you're right. in. Right. And if you're in a situation where the sound isn't quite where it needs to be, change the environment. And it's completely doable and actually looks really, really clean and really, really cool if you do it right. Yep. Mm. Cool deal, man. So that is our epic equipment of the week. Whoa. And I believe that brings us to the end of the, the podcast. Oh we my did God. it. We made it through episode oh, one. So. That's a, assuming that it's still recording. We got to um, make sure you, you comment <laughs> about our uh, episode one. Absolutely, right. we'd, love to, we'd love to hear what you guys thought. Yep. Uh, this is kind of the general format that uh, we came up with and moving forward, just talk about interesting things that are going on and highlight some interesting equipment mm -hmm. uh, and just kind of sit down, hang out and, and rap with you guys. Um, we'll be back next week, right? Yeah, absolutely. So tune in again. And what, what we want to do is we also want to do uh, a Q and A segment as part of these podcasts. And what, okay. uh, you know, that's probably not going to be a weekly thing right off the gate, depending on, you know, if we get a bunch of questions, maybe we will right away, but uh, we'd like to see you guys. If you have questions about this type of stuff, Go ahead and leave it in the comments below. If we don't get to it next week, we'll keep those uh, questions accumulating. Eventually, we'll do like a full segment of Q&A where we dive in and, and really get nitty and gritty with, uh, with what you guys got. Plus, maybe there's some uh, good video ideas in there, and we'll just do full videos on some of that stuff. Yeah. Yep. So definitely leave that uh, in the uh, comments below. Remember, you can find us on Facebook at Epic Environments. I'm sorry, Facebook.com forward slash Epic ENV. Um, on Twitter, we're at Epic ENV and Instagram, Epic ENV as well. Hope to see you guys there. That's it. Take it away. <laughs> All right, guys. Woo! I gotta go home. Uh, who's cleaning up this mess? Gotta go for the nap. No, I'm just kidding. It's actually not that bad. It kind of cooled off. It wasn't that bad. We got it.